What is MIUI and what's all the hype surrounding MIUI and Xiaomi? This is a common question for many, especially those new to flashing custom ROMs. So today, in this video, I'm going to be answering those questions to the best of my knowledge and also be showing you guys some of the highlights of MIUI. So if this is your first time here or if you better have just made you sit through a twilight marathon and you just don't have the will to remember anything anymore, well, my name's Ash and you're watching Safe Deck. Let's get started. Every Android manufacturer has their own custom UI on top of Android. Samsung's got TouchWiz, HTC's got Sense, Sony's got the Xperia UI, and even the newer players like Oppo and Gioni have ColorOS and Amigo respectively. So why do manufacturers do it? You often see many of us complaining about custom UIs on top. It causes devices to lag, eats up resources, we like stock Android. So why do manufacturers continue doing it? Well. They'd like you to believe that it gives you a better user experience. They do it to add features to Android and yes, in the early days of Donut and Eclair when Android was in its infancy, this was a bit true. But today in reality, manufacturers do it mainly to breed a sense of familiarity and build customer loyalty. How does that work? Well, let me explain. Now say your average not so tech savvy user buys a HTC phone, next year when he or she decides to upgrade, buy a new phone, what's to stop them from choosing a Samsung or a Sony? After all, today all flagships run on Snapdragon 801 with 2 to 3 gigs of RAM and provide similar performances. Barring the camera and the aesthetics, manufacturers feel they want another layer to differentiate themselves from their competitors. So now, this not so tech savvy user with an HTC phone might choose HTC again, just because they are familiar with the UI with Sense. Well, this might not make the most sense, this is why the concept of custom UIs exist. Now, coming back to MIUI, MIUI is a custom firmware developed by Xiaomi. They, can, they came out with their first version of MIUI towards the end of uh, 2010. Mi stands for Xiaomi, uh, that's Xiaomi's branding. They say it stands for Mobile Internet or Mission Impossible and a nod to all the difficulties that they had to go through. And UI obviously stands for User Interface. Xiaomi's rise to fame has largely been due to taking the current market concept of custom UIs leading to brand familiarity and kinda sorta reverse engineering it if I may call it that. They first came out with MIUI for a bunch of popular mainstream phones. Back in 2010, Android was mainly about HTC and Samsung. While HTC had a bad habit of not supporting even relatively new phones via software updates, user annoyances with Samsung's touchwiz are well documented. So this meant more and more users started rooting phones and flashing custom ROMs. This led to the success of dedicated custom firmwares like Cyanogen Mod and MIUI. So why is MIUI popular? Well, there are quite a few reasons. Number one, customization. MIUI was one of the first custom firmwares to provide an extensive list of themes. Today, you can change anything and everything from icons to lock screens, wallpapers to lock styles, dialer and notification bar styles, and even boot animations. By providing the option to sell icon packs or themes, Xiaomi created a market. Now there are tons and tons of themes and icons to choose from. We'll take a look at all, all of these in detail in the next part of this video. Number 2. Support Xiaomi supports phones with MIUI a lot longer than the manufacturer. While manufacturers are happy supporting devices as little as possible so that they can push the sales of the next device, Xiaomi has no incentive to stop releasing MIUI for devices. This means a device running MIUI continues receiving updates a long time after a manufacturer ceases updating the phone. Number 3. Eliminates the risk of buying Chinese phones In the list that you're seeing right now, you might not recognize a lot of names. A fair lot of these are low-cost budget phones coming out of China. One of the biggest issues with buying a phone from China is the software. Often the software is half-baked with tons of Chinese language and or poorly translated English with little to no updates. If you see a device you want on this list, or even on this list, the first list is uh, phones officially supported by Xiaomi, while the second list is unofficial fan ports. Most ports work pretty well actually. Anyway, if you see the phone you want on either of these lists, you can actually buy it without worrying about software on board because you can always get MIUI on it. Number 5. Being released internationally means there's a lot of feedback from international users and with a weekly update schedule, translations are handled better. 
This makes the user experience a lot better when compared to US from other Chinese manufacturers like Lenovo or uh, Vivo or Mizu. Number six, ROMs for different devices feel the same but are not identical. Let me explain. Flashing a nonsense based custom ROM onto the HTC One would usually result in the loss of Zoe. In case of the Galaxy S4, the camera modes and IR functionality. Xiaomi actually has versions of MIUI for these phones which are built on top of Sense and TouchWiz respectively. This means the camera, uh, the camera apps or support for the IR blaster can be preserved despite flashing MIUI. Everything's not as rosy though, there are some downsides to MIUI too. 1. With recent iterations, MIUI doesn't come with Google Play services by default. They can be flashed separately or downloaded from the Xiaomi Mi store. Not a big deal, just gonna take you an extra minute or two. 2. The lack of an app drawer. This is again fixable by installing the MIUI app drawer from the Play Store. 3. MIUI since it's heavily skinned is almost always gonna be an iteration or two behind stock Android or even Cyanogen mod for that matter. But that being said, MIUI is still a solid option for a lot of people and has a huge install base. So back in late 2011, Xiaomi launched their first phone, the Mi 1. With every subsequent release, Xiaomi's gained a lot of media attention. Xiaomi does not have physical stores, but instead chooses to sell patches of a few hundred thousand phones online directly. With phones being sold at close to cost and no margin for the middleman, phones are priced very low. This results in batches of hundreds of thousands of phones being sold out in mere minutes. This also throws up a new problem. Procuring these devices outside China becomes a huge hassle because any retailer selling, the, selling these phones has their own markups involved. Insanely high markups. These days this has been resolved quite a bit with the advent of retailers like XiaomiWorld.com who keep the markups quite low. Say for example the Xiaomi Mi 3 that you've been seeing in this video has a Snapdragon 800 chipset inside with a full HD display, 2 gigs of RAM, 13 megapixel rear camera, a 3000 mAh battery and a whopping 64 gigs of internal storage. You can get this from XiaomiWorld.com for $479. The 16 gig variant is available even cheaper at under $400. So how does Xiaomi manage to sell these phones this cheap? The answer is simple. Think Amazon with the Kindle. With the Google Play Store being blocked in China due to Chinese legislation, Xiaomi makes money off their Mi Store and on top of that, sales of the different themes, icons and so on. And don't worry, there are tons and tons of free icons and themes available as well. This is going to be a challenge when Xiaomi ventures out of China to regions where Google Play services are available. How do they handle it? Only time or maybe Hugo Barra can answer that. So guys, here I am. I'm actually editing this video and there is actually one thing that I believe Xiaomi could do. I was just thinking about this and I thought I should actually add this part to the video. So sorry about the, you know, the way this is being shot. But that being said, there are one of two things actually that Xiaomi could do. One, go the Nokia or Amazon route since we were talking about the Kindle and fork off Android like the way uh, Amazon's firmware is built on top of Android but still doesn't support Google services. When uh, Xiaomi comes out internationally, they could possibly migrate to a more folk dot version of Android kind of thing where they where you get the apps from the Mi Store rather than the Play Store. Or the second thing that they could possibly do is kind of what Samsung's been trying to do is kind of what Samsung did with the gear. Like uh, the Galaxy Gear had Android underneath, but it was skinned with Samsung's TouchWiz kind of UI on top so much that when Samsung moved to Tizen with the Gear 2 and the Gear 2 Neo, uh, nobody really noticed it because end of the day the functionality is the same. So uh, either me, either Xiaomi could do something like that with the UI, get their own OS, or they could possibly fork Android. These are one of two things. Again, this is just speculation on my part. Anyway, I'm done with it. So let's get back to the video. If this video has you the least bit intrigued about MIUI, you don't have to rush out and buy a phone running MIUI or even flash MIUI onto your Android phone. I'd suggest that you try out the Mi Home Launcher. This is a custom launcher from Xiaomi that can be downloaded from the Google Play Store. And this launcher is free. So it doesn't give you all the functionality of MIUI but it is a great place to get started to get a feel of uh, to get a feel to know what you can expect from UI. Just remember, MIUI is a lot more powerful and customizable than the Mi Home Launcher. Anyway, in the next part of this video, let's take a look at some of, some of the tips and tricks, some of the features that MIUI brings to the table. 
I'll leave a direct link to that video right below the like button in the description. You guys, and you guys can find it annotated to the side here as well. So I guess that pretty much wraps up this video. Hope you guys have a better understanding of MIUI and Xiaomi today. And uh, if you guys do, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And for more videos like these, stay subscribed. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. And I'll catch you soon in the next one. Till then, this is Ashia from C4E Tech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.